If you go way back on my channel, you'll see that I've done a list of my favorite ice levels, which made sense because I'm a snowman, right? And then I even did my top 10 fire levels about a year later because, I don't know, it was the opposite of ice? So now it's time to do what any logical earth, wind, and fire fan would do and move on to the next element, my top 5 wind levels. Earth might have to come later. Why only five? Well, honestly, it's pretty hard to find wind levels. Most of the time, they're a small gimmick that's combined with other obstacles in a stage, and you'll see some of that on this list. Now, if you surveyed 100 people about what they thought of wind levels, the top answer on the board would definitely be, uh, they suck and are really annoying. But there are at least five that are really memorable to me, and I actually enjoy the wind mechanic. It switches up the gameplay and adds some unique twists. So let's count it down. Five. Super Mario 3D World added a lot of new things to the franchise, like Ninja Goombas, an obese dinosaur to go water sliding with, and Cat Mario. Yeah, I don't know either. But then you get to level 6-5, Typhoo flurries, and they combine two unlikely companions together. Ice and Wind. So not only are you having a jolly good time skating around on ice, but you also gotta watch out for the wind being blown by these dudes. Look at them, they're so cute! They look like ice cream, I just wanna lick them. Then there's this part, I don't know where that wind's coming from. They must have tooted. There isn't a whole lot else to this stage, it just added some cool stuff. <laughs> get it? Cool. I'm cool. Four. The Legend of Zelda actually has a lot of places that deal with wind mechanics. In Link Between Worlds, you have to use the Tornado Rod for several puzzles. Heck, in Wind Waker, there's an entire dungeon called the Wind Temple. But I didn't choose either of those games. I went with the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess, and this is mainly for two reasons. One, you get the Gale Boomerang in here and have to use it to move the bridges around to reach new areas, which I thought created some pretty sweet puzzles. And number two, Baboon Butts. Lots and lots of Baboon Butts. They're just mesmerizing. How could you not love the bab- Oh, wait, uh, you're still here? Uh, let's just move on, shall we? <clears throat> Three. Volgar the Viking is one of my all-time favorite games. It's hard as balls, but it's a good kind of hard. You go through all these different set pieces and encounter crazy bosses, and then you get to level five, the airship. This is just the perfect last level before the final castle. The drums pound in the background as you jump from ship to ship, killing Medusa wannabes. Then when you enter the temple, it shows you these crazy wind turbines. That's right, you're gonna have to float around in this bad boy. I like this because it doesn't just use them to blow you up long passages, it also moves you along the ground, pushes you every which way here, and it'll even make you use your brain too. In this part, you actually want to avoid the wind, otherwise it'll launch you into the spikes. It teaches you that they can be good or bad depending on the situation. It's just an awesome level and the perfect slap cherry on a punch to the nuts kick. Two. As you're all well aware, I love me some Donkey Kong, DKC2 in particular. There's so much awesomeness going on here and expanded unique levels. Once you enter Gloomy Gulch though, you know the game's about to get real. The difficulty ramps up big time and one of these toughies is Gusty Glade. The level itself would be pretty simple if it wasn't for this stupid wind. I like that it tells you, hey, this is going to be something a little different. See these leaves? They're important. It'll blow in whatever direction the wind is going and you gotta pay attention. Sometimes it'll blow against you, sometimes it'll help you cross big gaps. And like the last level in Volgar, sometimes you'll have to wait for the wind to die down completely. It's definitely not the hardest level, or even the toughest level with wind mechanics. Looking at you, animal antics! But it was certainly memorable. Pro tip, just use Dixie. In fact, just always use Dixie. One. I've praised Shovel Knight a heck of a lot on this channel, especially for its ability to take old and new level tropes and throw them together. One of the last levels, and one of the hardest, is the Flying Machine. First off, this stage is absolutely gorgeous. I love the palette choice here, it really adds to the theming of Propeller Knight. Look how romantic he is. But don't get too cozy, cause this level puts your skills to the test. Introducing, Wind that blows whatever direction it feels like. That's right, sometimes it'll blow up, sometimes it'll blow down, sometimes it'll blow side to side. Mainly, it'll blow in whatever direction will lead to the most death for you. Oh, spikes up top? Let's go that way. Bottomless pit down below? Sounds good, boss. You gotta think outside the box here to make it out alive. It was an incredibly memorable experience, especially playing through again as Plague Knight. Most people struggled with the boss fight here, but I just used homing bombs and it was pretty easy. So, get good. In conclusion, wind. Hey, I'm Snowman, thanks for watching. Tell me your favorite win levels down below, I'd love to check them out. If you enjoyed, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more stuff like this. I do countdowns, but also do a series on game design, you can check them out here. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for updates, I don't have very many followers. I have to pass my friends, help me do it, please? Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you guys next time.